This is my project for the programming themes module. Um, it, it is a Arduino control smart home with an Android app that you can see here. Now we are going to see the different devices. So for example, this is a white LED. We also have a yellow LED that we they are working the they work in the same in the same way. And we also have a, an RGB LED, which we can set all the different color combinations. Uh, for example, the the green component uh, glows a bit less than the other. So, for example, the the cyan color is not actually cyan. And this is the blind, which have different angles, and which it's a servo motor and we can change its position and finally we have a ceiling fan which is a dc motor and we can set to two speeds to it because it is controlled by a mosfet transistor so we can turn off or change its speed with the pulse modulated waves now we are going to see how everything works Now we are going to take a look on how all these devices work. The Arduino is over here and it got all the devices connected to it. For example, we are going to start with the normal LEDs. This is a white LED and this is a yellow one. Both are soldered here and these two wires go at the at here in the beginning of the breadboard so we have these two resistors the brown wires are the positive and the white wires are the negative and these are hooked to the pins 2 and 3 For the RGB LED, which is this one over here, uh, we got pretty much the same. It is also soldered over here. The difference is that it has a wire for its different channel and another one for, another one for the for the ground. So here we have these three resistors, and those are hooked on the pins 4, 5 and 6 all of these ones for the RGB LED and the ground is on the ground for the uh, blind it is a servo motor actually it is wired over here and it is uh, this is the USB cable for the Arduino and it came over here so we have it connected there and it comes over here where it is the data is connected to the pin 7 on the Arduino and we have a capacitor and it is wired to the ground and to the 5 volts and finally we have the the ceiling fan which is a normal DC motor the one which comes with the Arduino starter kit and it is connected over here to the pin 11 which it can use the PMW from the Arduino so we have it connected to a MOSFET transistor which has the gate connected to the pin 11 and it is connected to the ground of the DC motor with a with the transistor 
and we also have a 9 volts battery pack connected on the other side of the Arduino also connected both grounds of the breadboard and we also have a diode here which prevents the motor from uh, sending voltage so we prevent the matching the Arduino and this is pretty much everything here we have the scheme of the connections here and this is all the wire and and the Arduino Now we are going to take a look at the Arduino code. First of all, we are going to look at the Arduino sketch, which is, which is called Smart Home. And as you can see, we are including the Smart Home controller that we are going to see in a moment. And here we have a commentary with, with the different pins for the electronic devices on the on the Arduino that we have just seen. And here we declare the smart home controller. And in the setup, we need to realize the serial. We call this function from the smart home that it creates the devices. And in the loop, we are going to read the input from the serial. And we are going to manage the devices depending on this input. In the Smart Home Controller class, we have a class defined and we have the different functions that we have seen in the Smart Home sketch. And here we have declared the read string and the read number which will we use to receive the data and transform it to an int number, which will uh, be interpreted to send an order to any of the included devices on the on the house. And the functions, well, we initialize the devices and the variables. And in the create device function, we create each of the devices that we are going to see now. And as you can see, we create two different lamps that are uh, normal LEDs and we set its device ID and its digital pin to which is attached to this device. And we do the same with the different devices but calling the extra functionalities for each of the different devices. For example, the RGB lamp has two extra functions to set the green and the blue pin. And for example, the blind device has a init servo function that initializes the servo motor. In the read input function, we are going to read when only when the serial is available, and we are going to create a a string uh, with the receive uh, bytes. Uh, if the string is, is not empty, we are going to convert the, the red string to a number to interpret it later. And finally, we have the manage devices function, which uh, this is specific for the, for the ceiling fan, as it has to be repeatedly called uh, to use the PMB PMWB waves. And this is for all the devices as they are override uh, the functions. We can call it and it's specific for each device. So we take the number that we have just read on the on the read input function and we split it in two. First, we divide it by 10 to get the 10th place of the number. So for example, if we receive the number 20, it will mean that the first number it corresponds to the device on the on the array. 
and the second number correspond to the device state. And finally, we call the algorithm function in the devices to set the state with the device ID. And for the last couple of files, the devices, uh, we can see that it defines a basic class called device, which has the constructor related. So we cannot create a base device. And it only defines all the possible devices that we can create. And it uh, defines the uh, basic functions and some virtual ones to get them overridden on on the specific devices. So, for example, we have the lamp. Each of the devices is going is the same pr practically, and we have the different status for each device. So, for example, a lamp it can only be on, off, or on. So, in the in the set current state that we call in the manage devices function will be specific for this lamp and it only will use its status. So if it's on, we set the digital pin on high. If it's not, we set it on low. And it's pretty much the same for all the rest of the devices, except that, for example, the LGB has its own functions, but it works the same. With its state, it sets a different combination of of the pins, and that's everything on the Arduino code. Okay, so now we are going to see the old red code. This is an static image because I cannot record on the Raspberry Pi, so. Uh, we can see that we have different um, MQTT um, topics which are subscribed to the same MQTT broker and we are receiving the, all the messages on each of these topics and we have it connected to a set message payload. Um, this set message payload boxes um, converts all the receive strings from the from the Android app and change change them to to a number. And after that, it um, adds a different value depending on the topic. For example, on the LED one, it doesn't add anything because it's the first device, so the first number is going to be a zero, a zero. But for example, in the RGB LED topic, the set message payload, it will add uh, 20. So for example, if we send that we want to uh, turn off the RGB LED, uh, it's going to be a 20 because the zero means that uh, it's the off state of the RGB LED and the two means that it's the RGB LED device on the Arduino. For example, for the fan, it's going to add 40 as it's the uh, device number four in the Arduino. And we can set it to mid speed, uh, high speed, or to turn off. And finally, we obviously have it connected to the Arduino serial, so we can send it. And to uh, debug output, so we can see where it's going. And finally, we are in Android Studio. So first of all, we are on the Android manifest uh, and we have to add the service for the library that we are going to use for the MQTT communications, which is from Eclipse and it's called PAHO, MQTT PAHO. So we add it here and we have to add some permissions for the Android app, for example, the internet permission or the access network, network state. So we can use this library properly. After that, we can create a MQTT client wrapper 
So we have all the functionality declared here and now I'll just spread it all over the code. So for example, we first create the, um, the server IP, which is the IP from the Raspberry in my local wireless network. And it's a TCP server, so we have to add this if in, and the client ID is empty and we create the MQTT client with these uh, values. And now we can start um, describing some functionality, for example, the connection to the broker. So we can set the callback and set different functions to, for example, when it receives a message, if it's connected or not, if it lost the connection or if the connection is a success or a failure. And we have also subscribe and unsubscribe function that we are not using yet. So we can use it in the future. But for example, the publish function that we have to use to send the, the information to the, to the topics on the MQTT broker. So we pass the topic and the message as a parameter and we send it. If it's a success, it is correctly published. If it's not, we have a, we'll get a, an error message and also the disconnect function which is uh, pretty much the same than the connect function now we have the layout of the actual application and as you can see here is the uh, what we have seen at the beginning and it has different functions uh, for the for all the devices this is the design view and this is the the code view where I almost done everything and here you can see we have the different buttons for the LEDs and the different layouts for each of the devices as you can see here this is the one of the RGB LED so we have the different button colors and all, all of that and finally we have the main activity which is the class that controls all the application. So we have the create function. Um, first, we have declared the MQTT client that we have uh, created here. So on the on create function of the application, we are connecting to the MQTT server and well, setting some things for the application to to load the this fragment. And finally, we call this function that is uh, binding the actions for all the buttons. So for example, for the lamp, for the LED, we are going to bin the on and off buttons. And for example, we are going to send that the on button sends publish uh, the message one on the topic LED one, and as well with the off button, but publishing a zero. And pretty much the same for all the buttons and which are send which are sending its uh, state. So this is for the LGB lead and we you can see that we have uh, eight combinations because we have the zero here. And finally for the six bars of the blind and the ceiling fan, we have this function declared where we only publish the the message when the user releases the sick bar and this is to add some functionality to the radio group because it won't work if i didn't do that it will if i select the yellow for example it won't turn off the off button and so so i have to manually turn off when when it's needed and that's everything about the whole project.